This is Ringler Radio, where you get all the latest news and information about settlement solutions, litigation, mediation, and structured financial security from Ringler, the largest and most experienced company of settlement consultants in the United States. Ringler has been helping injured people and their families since 1975. Ringler Radio is made possible in part by American General, Liberty Mutual, MetLife, Mutual of Omaha, New York Life, Pacific Life, and Prudential. Now join Ringler Radio host Larry Cohen. Well, hello and welcome to Ringler Radio, everyone. I'm Larry Cohen, the head of Ringler Northeast Operations, and we're glad you could join us again today. Well, this year, the Illinois Trial Lawyer Association released a fact sheet on the state of the Illinois legal system, and it revealed a lot of misconceptions about lawyers, litigation, and the entire civil justice system in the state of Illinois. Well, today on Ringler Radio, we're going to examine these findings and explore some of the misconceptions about certain legal practices and the assumptions about them. In order to help us do all that, I have a great co-host today. He's a great friend and Ringler colleague from Chicago, Mike Casey. Mike is uh, head of the Chicago office of Ringler. He previously was the chairman of the board of Ringler's board of directors, and now he serves as chairman emeritus. Mike has more than 30 years of claims and structured settlement experience. So welcome to the show, Mike. Great to have you, my friend, and uh, go go Cubbies tonight, huh? There you go. There you go, Larry. Uh, it's always good to, uh, to visit with my uh, old buddy and the voice of Ringler Radio. <laughs> oh. you know, I, was, I was thinking about uh, when we started in the business and got out of college, I think the president was Lyndon Johnson. <laughs> well, and when we started with Ringler, it was a new guy named Ronald Reagan. You got it. Uh, you got it. But I think... That's the last thing we want to talk about politics. <laughs> <laughs> You're probably right. You're probably right. It's very contentious. But we got a great show. We got a great show and a great guest. So go ahead. Mike. No question about it. Well, let me introduce our special guest. Uh, our special guest today is Stephen Phillips, the managing partner at the Phillips Law Offices in Chicago. Steve is an extensively published writer and sought after lecturer on legal topics ranging from medical malpractice to tort reform. His law practice focuses on personal injury, especially catastrophic injury cases. And Steve was also the 2013 president of the Illinois Trial Lawyers Association. Well, that's quite a quite a background, Steve. Thanks uh, a, a million for being here, and welcome to the show. Thank you for having me, Larry. I really appreciate it. And uh, let's go Cubs, seventh game, World Series tonight. You know, I, I, I need to tell our audience this is quite, quite interesting. Steve is actually driving to Cleveland to go to the game, and we've caught him on his way there. So I think this is fantastic that, uh, first of all, you're such a passionate fan and uh, that you, you're willing to take the time out to, to share your knowledge with us here today. So, Steve, let me let me start by asking you this. The State of Illinois' legal systems fact sheet disclosed several key areas of misconception, and one of them is the subject uh, of tort reform. We're going to talk about a lot of those issues today, but but tort reform was one that was politically charged, and and it and it's one that really requires a lot of discussion. So, uh, Mike, why don't you uh, start the discussion uh, with Steve on that issue? Well. Sure. Um, well, Steve, you know, you've got so many years of experience and leadership uh, of the Illinois Bar. I thought maybe you could help us understand this thing that people like to call tort reform. Um, thanks for asking that question. And the first principle I'd like to start with is the phrase tort reform. And people who want to change the civil justice system, they use the word reform and it sounds like mom's apple pie and Chevrolet, but reform, all it really means, and people need to understand, is it means change. That's all it means is change. And when people look and, at the facts to determine whether or not the tort system, the civil justice system needs to be changed for injured people, the facts so overwhelmingly favor leaving the system as is and making sure injured people can hold wrongdoers accountable. So when pe- I, And I want to stress to people, pin people down. When they use that phrase, tort reform, say, what do you mean? Change? Why should we change the system? And a few interesting facts about the system, and then I'll, I'll, I'll pipe down for a minute, are that people don't realize that in the civil justice system in the state of Illinois, 
only 7% of all lawsuits filed are injury cases. Mm -hmm. Really opens people's eyes. Yeah, no question. 65% are businesses suing businesses for money. Hmm. Well, Steve, let's discuss the impact. You mentioned 7% are injury cases. Let's discuss the impact that tort reform will have on those who are injured or killed in those kinds of incidences. What, uh, what are you seeing? Well, here's what people have to keep in mind, and I, I use this, this concept frequently. Until it happens to you, it means nothing. The court system is the furthest thing from anybody's mind until it happens to them and they're injured. And they lose the most precious thing that they can possibly have, which is their health. And the insurance industry is powerful. They're well-moneyed. They have great lawyers and lots of resources. And what's their job? The insurance industry's job is to, is to increase shareholder profits. So when you have an injured person who's injured as a result of somebody else's negligence and they need medical care and their lost income, and they're worried about their mortgage, and they're worried about their bills, and they're worried about keeping their house, that's when it becomes personal. And the injured people, the only way they have to do to level the playing field against the insurance company who is representing the wrongdoer is to be able to go to the court system. No question. And no that's question. The, and, and as I said, it's personal, and pain is the easiest thing in the world to endure Unless it's, it's you. Else. Yeah, when it's somebody else. You're right. Well, I was just going to say that when we look at the court system and how few cases there are in the court system of injury cases, we really look and say, this system's pretty good. This system allows the common person to hold wrongdoers accountable. Exactly. And if the wrongdoer isn't held accountable, who's going to pay the medical bills? Public aid? The public? That's wrong. You know, Mike actually has some, some, some information about the degree of these filings and, and the case filings that have been going on in Illinois. Mike, what do you have on that? Well, according to the annual report of the Illinois courts, their statistical summary, civil cases have actually, uh, in Illinois, have dropped by 33% between 2010 and 2014. Uh, as opposed to what we tend to hear uh, on the TV and radio ads in political pushes that the civil suits are running wild. There's actually been a substantial delay. Uh, can you tell us about that, Steve? Yeah. People don't realize that the folks in the state of Illinois are not, not litigation crazy. They don't, they're not in a big rush to get to the courthouse. Filings are way down. They're down, as Mike said, 33%. There's a number of courthouses across the state, various counties that had planned expansions. They're no longer planning expansions. There's no need for it. Um, so all of these costs of litigation, they're dropping. People don't realize it. You know, it's not just in, in uh, run-of-the-mill civil cases. Uh, my understanding is the number of medical malpractice cases has also been on a steady decline for over a decade, uh, something almost near 40% since 2003. W what does that say about the uh, state of affairs in Illinois uh, when medical malpractice cases are down like that? Well, what that tells people is that there are, and I do a lot of medical malpractice cases, and I've been doing them for 30 years. What it tells people is that it's really hard to sue a doctor because it's so expensive. I have an awful lot of people who come to me who are victims of medical malpractice, and I tell them flat out, I can't afford to fund your case. It's just too much money, and the recovery isn't going to be great enough. So what What's happening is there's a lot of victims of medical malpractice who have legitimate claims who are going without compensation. Um, and if you look at the if you look at the total number of medical malpractice cases in the court system, it's 0.2, less than one percent of all lawsuits. Wow, that's uh, amazing. Malpractice filings are way way down. Well, you know, Steve, uh, I hear a lot of noise also on TV with various advertisements and commercials from politicians uh, that indicate that we've got problems in Illinois for our businesses. It's a tough place for business. But apparently, Fortune magazine revealed that Illinois is a headquarters for 37 of the nation's largest companies on Fortune 500. And of those companies, 22 of them 
uh, in the have risen in the ranks uh, over the last since 2016. Do you believe there's a, a misconception then in the, in what comes what the present state of business is in, for Illinois companies? Oh, that's been a big speaking point for all the the businesses that want to implement tort reform, and they say Illinois is bad for business. When the facts scream otherwise, Illinois has 124 major corporations with their headquarters in Illinois. When we look at the Fortune 500 list, there's only three states in the United States that have more Fortune 500 companies than Illinois. Now, these are big companies, smart people, executives, and profits. And if Illinois is so bad, why do all these big companies with all these brilliant executives want to be headquartered in Illinois? You know, one of the the other things, Steve, that we keep hearing is that, uh, especially because of the misconception about medical malpractice, potentially, is that uh, you had a lot of doctors leaving the state and uh, stopping their practice. But according to the American Medical Association, Despite the claims that doctors are leaving Illinois, it seems the number of physicians licensed and engaged in patient care in Illinois has, uh, you know, seemed to uh, not decline. So uh, what, what do you say, have to say about that? Well, again, the facts belie the arguments. The tort reformers always like to throw out the alleged statistic that doctors are leaving Illinois when, in fact, over the last 10 years, each year, the number of physicians in Illinois has risen. Don't let facts get in the way of a good argument. When you look at the reasons why doctors locate in a particular state, independent surveys show the reasons that they locate in a particular state are family, income, and liability exposure is way, way down the list. So the facts belie those statements. I hear you. I hear you. Before we go to break, uh, Steve, I want to ask you one more question, and that is all of our listeners who are listening around the country uh, obviously are hearing about the experiences you're having here in, there in Illinois. I'm wondering whether any of your uh, own research or own travels, talking to other lawyers, uh, how do you think uh, the, the nation at, at, at large is doing in some of these areas. Do you think Illinois is somewhat unique in, in having, let's say, doctors not declining or or certain types of litigation not be quite as prevalent? Is is Illinois a, a, a bellwether or a, a, you know, a standalone, or, or is it more reflective of what the nation seems to be? Oh, I think Illinois is a good representative state of what's going on with the civil justice system and doctors and the economy. Um, there's There's Of course, you have to look at each state individually. I can tell you this, that when we look at the states that have uh, put in aggressive, quote, tort reform, which really cuts off the rights of victims, that there are an awful lot of hardships going on for injured people. And, for example, in Nebraska, which has got very restrictive medical malpractice laws, the maximum recovery for a brain injured child who will need eight to $10 million a year over their lifetime to care for them is, is a little over a million dollars. And who's going to fund, who's going to fund the rest of that medical care, the taxpayers, not the wrongdoers. And people should really look and say, if you enact this tort reform in these States, who's going to pay the medical care, who's going to pay the housing for these injured people? the taxpayers, and I don't think they want that. Yeah, I think you're talking about a private sector versus public sector a remedy for some of these bad, bad injuries that are occurring to some. So we're going to get into that, I think, in the second half of the show. But let's take a quick break right now, and uh, Mike Casey and I will be right back in a minute with our special guest, Attorney Steve Phillips from Chicago, Illinois. We'll be right back. This is Ringler Radio, brought to you from Ringler the nation's leading provider of fair settlement solutions. Did you know that Ringler is involved in a third of all structured settlement cases in the country? Ringler advisors work with all the parties in a lawsuit settlement to find the best possible financial solution for the people involved. Everybody wins. There's a Ringler consultant in all the major cities of the U.S. No one has more experienced experts in the settlement business than Ringler. Check out our website at www.ringlerassociates.com for the best information for injured parties, attorneys, and claims professionals to find the Ringler advisor nearest you. 
When it's your interest at stake in a lawsuit settlement, you want only the best, most objective financial plan. You can count on Ringler Advisors to create a customized plan that meets the financial needs of you and your family for the future. Visit RinglerAssociates.com to learn more. Welcome back to Ringler Radio. Certainly glad you could join us. I'm your host, Larry Cohen, and today I'm joined by my co-host and Ringler colleague, Mike Casey from Chicago, and our special guest, Attorney Steve Phillips, the managing partner at the Phillips Law Offices, also in Chicago, Illinois. Well, Steve, despite the claims that businesses and jobs are leaving Illinois, as we talked about previously, the data seems to prove otherwise, and uh, Crane Chicago Business, which is a very respected uh, periodical, it shows that Illinois gained uh, co- quite a few jobs, 138,000 of them in 2014 and 15, up by 2.3%. What is your understanding as to the present state of the Illinois economy since the 2008 recession, which kind of made everybody worry about the future? Well, again, I'm a fact guy, and I've always used facts to win cases and win arguments because I think it uh, tells the tale. And Illinois is ranked second in the nation where businesses are being created the fastest. And I think that absolutely debunks any argument otherwise about how bad the Illinois economy is. Um, Small business growth in Chicago and Illinois is among the strongest in the nation. And, And I might also add, corporations are relocating in Illinois at a higher frequency than all our neighboring states. Very telling. Steve, that's a good lead in to, to another question. The National Council on Compensation Insurance has issued its, uh, its workman's comp advisory rates for 2017, and it states that the Illinois employers should see a 12.9, almost 13% cut in their workman's compensation insurance premiums in 2017. That's the third largest cut in the nation and totals more than all of our neighboring states combined. Uh, Let's talk about uh, workman's compensation in the state of Illinois. Well, workers' compensation has probably been the most hot-button issue in the last two years since uh, the Governor Rauner took office. It's been his swan song with regard to what he wants to do in Illinois to make Illinois, his words, more competitive. But the reality of it is, in 2011, there were reforms enacted against injured workers in favor of business. And at the strong voice of the workers, we as the trial lawyers said, this is not fair, this is not right, and it isn't going to work, most importantly. And we said, if you're going to enact these reforms, we want transparency insurance. And we want the transparency to be shown by the National Council on Compensation Insurers, the rate-making agency for workers' compensation insurance companies. And what they found over the last four years is that premiums should drop by over 30% in Illinois for employers. 30%. Well, that's interesting. Wow. That is is really interesting. Uh, Let me ask you this. I I know that when you try to compare data to try to get some perspective on how you're doing, uh, oftentimes it gives rise to a lot of, uh, you know, confusion, but- how do you feel the workers' compensation in Illinois compares to your neighboring state of Indiana? That seems to be a, a major area of comparison. Well, that's a wonderful point because, again, when the governor took office, he said he wanted Illinois to be exactly like Indiana. And what we found out is that Illinois now, medical payments are lower than the state of Indiana as far as payouts and comp cases because of the re- quote, changes that were put in effect in 2011. The other criteria with regard to workers' comp is wages. And wages in Illinois are 27% higher than in Indiana. So by definition, the payouts for wages are going to be higher. We're lower, though, for medical payments. Now, a very interesting point that needs to be made about Indiana, that panacea, according to Governor Rauner, is that you have to see the company doctor and only the company doctor in Indiana. So the company doctor who plays golf with your employer every Saturday morning is managing the medical care for the injured workers. I can't imagine 
many injured workers would want the fox guarding the hen house for their precious health. I hear you. I hear you. You know, another area of misconception, uh, Steve, from the Illinois study centered around the subject of frivolous lawsuits. And, uh, you know, there's a there's a myth out there, I guess, that trial lawyers are filing a lot of frivolous lawsuits. And, uh, Mike, you remember uh, about a year ago, we did a show on uh, the famous McDonald's hot coffee case. You recall that? Yes, with, uh, yeah, yes she, I do. And she, the, uh, the guest had uh, done a documentary about it. And uh, it seems like what was painted as uh, some frivolous woman uh, holding coffee between her legs as she was driving and it spilled uh, was far from that when the facts were really uh, discovered. You know, it's a, it was a very interesting program. And if, if I, any listeners can want to look back at that hot coffee Ringo radio show, you, you, it was very informative. But in that same program by Stella yeah. Lineback, she outlined another case uh, which I think is a very, very interesting look at the so-called uh, frivolous lawsuits and tort reform issues. And uh, and I think Steve would, it would be very interested in it also, because they, she talked about a case, as Steve mentioned, in Nebraska, where there was a brain-damaged baby uh, whose future and his family futures was very highly af- uh, affected by the so-called tort reform. This was a Nebraska lawsuit where a mother who was expecting twin boys was experiencing problems and went to the hospital where, according to the jury, after hearing all the evidence, they decided that a mistake was made by the treating doctor and that one, it resulted in one of the twin boys having severe brain damage. They awarded a verdict of $5.6 million, and that was primarily to cover the costs and expenses for lifetime care uh, for this child. However, in Nebraska, as Steve pointed out, their tort reform caps reduce all injury awards to $1.25 million, which we all know when we handle these cases is not going to protect this child for the rest of their life. But interestingly enough, we have a, a, a comparison to a case that recently was handled by Steve here in Illinois, And in this case also, a mother gave birth to twin boys. Both boys were exposed uh, to an outbreak of influenza in the nursery after birth, but one of them was never tested for the flu prior to the discharge from the hospital. Now, three days after discharge, he developed pneumonia and brain damage. The poor mother questioned the hospital, was never given an answer as to why this occurred, and the, the child, unfortunately, has brain damage and will have serious lifetime disabilities. will never have a normal, independent life. Now, a lawsuit got filed uh, here in Illinois, uh, but it languished in the court system for a long time as it was hard for anybody to determine what the answer from the hospital was. But eventually, with the good luck of this family, this case got referred to Steve. Uh, and I know Steve well for many years, and this is what he does. He dug into the records, and he found out that there had been an outbreak of flu in the unit when the child was determined uh, was discharged, and he determined that the infection uh, was a cause of the brain damage, uh, and there was no warning to the mother of this possibility. And because of his tenacity and, and his expertise, this case got settled. I, I, I'm not sure if we could mention the number of the settlement. I'll leave that to Steve when I turn it over to him. But the child and the mother now have the funds to obtain the care and assistance that will help them cope with this most difficult future. Otherwise, as Steve pointed out earlier, they'd have been relegated to the bare-bones care at the expense of the taxpayers and through public aid. Uh, as is, is what happened in Nebraska. So when people talk about tort port reform, let's remember people like uh, the mother and child here. Our tort reform system worked on this for this family, thanks to Steve. Well, that that that's a terrific uh, testimonial, and I'm sure Steve's going to talk a little bit about that. But but really, it comes back to in Nebraska, there's a cap, and, and any of the excess. Uh, damages or treatments that need that are needed by the injured individual really get passed on to the taxpayers. So there's there's a unintended consequence oftentimes about people pushing for let's say so called tort reform. So with with that, Steve, as a preface, uh, give us your thoughts on that. A phrase that's panty uh, that's panty to bomb fairly often. 
that as a lawyer who's done this for 30 years, there isn't a lawyer worth his salt on the plaintiff's bar that can afford to file a frivolous lawsuit. If we're going to have a case that we don't get paid unless we win, mm -hmm. and the reason we have to take cases on a contingency is because we don't have an insurance company that can pay us every month. Our clients can't pay us every month. The contingency fee opens the courthouse doors to the common man. And what we have to do is if we can't win a case over three to five years, which is the time the case will be in our office, while our overhead continues, while our salaries continue, while we fund case expenses, we're not going to take it. It's just that simple. Yeah. Yeah. There's, but one thing that the public never hears about ever is cases with frivolous defenses. Tell us about the that. Insurance company, the insurance companies can afford to let the plaintiff or injured person get worn down. They can wait him or her out. Now, my injured clients are going to wait three to five years for their recovery. In the meantime, their mortgage continues. The insurance company hangs on to their money. They invest the money. They make money with the money. And they throw up frivolous worthless defenses. And I can tell you over the course of my career, I've seen it time and time again. I had a malpractice case where a resident physician gave a lady in the operating room for minor neck surgery, two times the maximum amount of dosage of a drug. He killed her. She died. They settled that case with this family and, and me as their lawyer the night before the trial began, five years later. Wow. That's quite quite a time the to wait. Before yeah. It yeah. And I can tell you that I had another case that took three and a half years to get resolved because a man got rear-ended by a truck in traffic when it was revealed that the truck driver had falsified his logbooks with regard to how much time he had been driving. He was fatigued. And it took three years to get his toll receipts and his gas receipts and his phone records, which showed with the company's knowledge, he'd been driving 20 hours a day for three straight days. You know, I know you have, uh, and we all do, uh, examples uh, for years about cases like this. And uh, what I want to talk about to close the show today is how the legal community in Illinois, Steve, is is changing the misconceptions uh, about lawyers and the legal system. You're out there doing a heck of a job trying to do that. Tell us a little bit more about the effort you're putting in to, to really change the, the conceptions and misconceptions in Illinois. Well, what we've done, for example, the Illinois Trial Lawyers Association, which is the uh, association which represents injured people and families, is what we've tried to do is publish fact sheets to let people know the true state of affairs about the civil justice system. Forget the myths, forget the talking points, forget the McDonald coffee cup nonsense. And what we've tried to do is let the public know what the true facts are. Um, it's difficult because the insurance companies with their billions and billions of annual profits can spend time advertising and influencing the public. Whereas that we have to do it one case at a time to let people know that, um, Again, until it happens to them, it's meaningless. It's in the back of their mind. We, we, we encourage people to support candidates who support the civil justice system, doors being open to everyone. No question. No question. And I just want to say, Steve, uh, in closing, that uh, one of the ways you get the word out is from places like Ringler Radio, uh, resources like this where people can, can hear about this because you're going to have listeners all around. And they're going to hear about the experiences in Illinois and, and try to maybe take some of those same experiences and, and get their own states to become a little more proactive uh, themselves. So with that, Steve, I want to thank you very much for being with us today. Uh, you've told a, a heck of a story about the experience uh, of uh, the facts, as you say, in Illinois. And uh, I think that was great. So, Steve, thanks for, thanks for being our special guest. Thank you very much for uh, having us. And again, I uh I tell people regularly, support candidates who will keep the courthouse doors open. Terrific. Now, if somebody wanted to get a hold of you, Steve, to talk about this or anything else, uh, how would they reach you? My office is 312-346-4262. Email is sphillips 
at phillipslegal.com. Great. And, and Mike, if someone wanted to reach you, how would they do that? Well, usually I'm hoping to be sitting in Steve's office, but my phone <laughs> number <laughs> is 312-332-0427. Terrific. And uh, if any of you want to reach any Ringler associate, talk about structured settlements or have a case you want to, you want to discuss, you can find all of us on the website, ringlerassociates.com. It's a terrific website. It's been updated. It's got great information, and you can reach all of us. And if you want to hear any Ringler radio show, Mike mentioned the hot coffee show from last year. Uh, all of the shows are available on ringlerassociates.com. They're also available on ringlerradio.com, legaltalknetwork.com, and or iTunes, where you can download the show uh, and listen to it at your leisure. So with that, I want to say thank you once again to Steve. Have a have a great time at the game tonight, Steve, and uh, let's hope the Cubs win. I'm rooting for you. Thank you for having me. I really appreciate it, guys. And Mike, as a White Sox fan from Chicago, I know you're rooting for the Cubs, too, so good luck to all of you tonight. You're right, I am. I'm a Chicago fan first, my friend, and, <laughs> and travel safe. Terrific. Travel safe with you and your son. Take care. Terrific, terrific. And for all of our other listeners out there, go have a great day and root for whatever team you want. Thanks. Bye-bye now. The views expressed by the participants of this program are their own and do not represent the views of, nor are they endorsed by, Legal Talk Network, its officers, directors, employees, agents, representatives, shareholders, and subsidiaries. None of the content should be considered legal advice. As always, consult a lawyer. Thanks for listening to Ringler Radio, celebrating more than a decade of podcasting and over 2 million listeners. Think of Ringler, the objective settlement advisors with more than 140 consultants in 60 cities nationwide. Visit ringlerassociates.com today.